Hello and welcome. This video is by filmsbychris.com. That's just Chris with a K. Filmsbychris.com. Chris with a K. I'm Chris with a K. And I thank you for listening to me today. Um, be sure to check out my website. <laughs> uh, today I'm going to talk about um, Linux games. So, uh, years ago, I'm not, not in general, I mean, I know there's a lot going on with Windows games now running on or Windows games running on Linux uh, through Steam and stuff like that, um, which I really don't care about. Uh, but we're talking about open source games. Uh, and a few years back, I made a game. And it was the point of it wasn't necessarily making the game; it was showing the process of trying to create a game using Blender and writing as little code as possible. And it worked. It was completed. It's up on GitHub if you haven't seen it. Um, I did want to build more levels for it, and I never did. Um, overall, it was a success, but yeah, it was a mess. It was pretty much, it was creating a game in a way that I would normally never create a game. Uh, normally, when it comes to programming, I suggest people program, write out code, you know, write the code. This was using logic bo blocks in Blender just to see if I could create a game. And it was called uh, Pop, uh, which uh, Originally, it was called Pissed Off Penguins, which some people found appropriate, I, I guess it is. So we decided to abbreviate to Pop. Uh, and it was it was kind of like Angry Birds. It, you know, it was a little different. Um, but again, the whole point of it was showing... I did a video for every step of the process. Um, and to do it with as little... I think the only code I wrote was a couple of lines for to get the mouse cursor on the screen to click on stuff. Everything else was done with logic blocks or logic bricks logic bricks or logic blocks in Blender, which if you're unfamiliar with, basically you can create a 3D scene in Blender, you can click on an object, go to game logic, and then you can say, okay, when, by by using drop-down menus and connecting these boxes or bricks or whatever you want to call them, you can say, okay, when the arrow key to the right is pressed, uh, make this object rotate to the right. If it's the left key is pressed, you know, a bunch of stuff. Everything is just, you use drop-down menus, basically like you're writing code using if, then, or statements. But using that method of not writing code becomes very sloppy, especially when you have a full game. Uh, and again, normally when I do tutorials on creating games and stuff such as that, I, I recommend that you write out the code and not just use on one of these what you see is what you get. But I also get not everybody's a programmer and people are going to want to uh, create games and not necessarily write out code. Anyway, while working on that project, I did get some comments because it was a Angry Birds type game. Uh, at least one person wrote, it's, it, it's been years and it stood out in my mind, is why do all these open source game developers never come up with new ideas and they just copy old ideas from previous video games that have already been created, we already have these games, we don't need open source versions of them, blah blah blah. Anyway, first off, uh, yeah, there's a lot of games that people might like, but they might be opposed to running closed source games. So it's great that even if there, there have been games where people completely uh, rewrite and make games, uh, I want to say like Red Alert and games like that, where they've rewritten the code open source and then you can import the graphics from the proprietary game. Because people who support and truly believe in free and open source software want free and open source software. We don't want closed source software on our machines if we can avoid it. And a game is something that we don't need. It's not like a like a hardware driver for to make my computer work, uh, which most people will, you know, even though they'd rather use open source, they'll they'll go with the proprietary just to get the hardware working. It's a game. Um, so yeah, even in aspects like that where they completely rewrite a game trying to make it exactly the same, that's that's great. That's useful. And now we have code and we can improve upon it. Because having open source code makes the games better. And I always go back to one of the best games ever is Doom. Doom, from the beginning, even before it was open sourced uh, under the GPL, it was very easy to modify the game. And there was a big modding commuter around. Well, now there's still people developing and improving on the software, people making new versions of the game, completely new games out of it. It's over 20, 25 years now. It's over 25 years old now. Um, it is a great game and just keeps getting better. And I still play it regularly. And the fact that it run on pretty much anything is because it's open source. Why any company wouldn't open source their software 
uh, when it comes to games blows my mind because I would be completely fine. I mean, I'd rather it not be like this, but I'd be completely fine with all the source code being open, especially if it's under a GPL license, but still have all the art and assets under a tight copyright. Um, so that, you know, legally, if you want, again, not ideal, and I'm not going to go into this too much, um, but to me, the source code is what's really important. And if a company really didn't want to open up their art because they're afraid no one's going to buy the game if if they don't have it, the game's no good without the art. It's a completely different game if someone recreates the art, okay? There's a whole thing with the GPL where if, if art or some part aspects of the game are hard coded into it. Well, now it's got to be released under the GPL, but separate assets don't have to be like that. And Doom is a great example of that, because Doom has been open source for over 20 years. And but you still can't just use the game without buying a copy legally anyway, because all the art, music, and sound—that's the whole point of the the free Doom project—is to recreate all that stuff so you can have a completely free game, and that takes years to do. Um, but having your code open source just allows other people to help you develop. So again, that's true with all software. I don't understand why they, why anybody making software wouldn't want to open source their code to get code, free code from other people, basically. Uh, but going back to, now I've gotten off track, going back to um, making games, again, some people want to completely port a game over to an open source code so that they can play it on newer systems, different operating systems, and also just not use proprietary code. But going back to like my game, which was a, a um, Angry Birds type game, is Angry Birds really that unique of a game? Is it, is it really a, a new idea? I mean, I look at it and I see it as just a modern version. I say modern, I mean, that was probably 10 years ago now that the Angry Birds have been out. But think back to, uh, you know, uh, QBasic back in the day and you had gorillas tossing the bananas. Or there was a similar game called Tanks or something like that where you would, you know, you had your wind blowing and you had your turn and you had to decide, uh, you know, what angle you were going to shoot at, how hard you were going to shoot based on the wind. That is Angry Birds. Angry Birds was not an original game. And and um, my game was obviously inspired. And some people would say, oh, well, you know, it's a knockoff or a clone. No, it's, I would say it's inspired by... Angry Birds and other similar type games. There's a difference between doing an exact clone, trying to, you know, uh, knock, to me a knockoff is I am trying to make people believe that this is Angry Birds, you know, and obviously no one's going to think my game is Angry Birds. My game was inspired by Angry Birds and I'm not, you know, pretending like I created something completely new uh, in the aspect and the concept of the game. And But my point here is there are genres of games. Uh, open source games sometimes try to recreate games from scratch so that we have the source code for those games. But at the same time, just because someone creates a game that's similar to another game doesn't mean that it's a knockoff, or I would even call it a clone. You know, you know, wouldn't call it a clone. It's it's inspired by, and that's a great thing to have inspired somebody. Um, the only time that somebody you inspire somebody and you should get upset about it is is basically greed where you're you're wanting to sue them for their work so you can make money off their work uh, and that's what you know certain laws allow companies to do which is sad but going back to the whole topic of this is why do open source game developers make games that are similar to games that already exist and that's because everybody does it and people want new games. And you know what? Even if they are trying to make a game just like another game, they might do a better job. Why not let them? Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. And I hope that you have a great day.